Hi, I'm Colin, a solution engineer at GitHub. In this quick video, I want to show you a little bit about what Copilot can do. So I've opened up a repo in a code space. This it has multiple projects in it, and I'm in a bikes project here, which happens to be a Node.js API. Before we get to that, though, I wanted to start off with something a little bit more academic, just to ease you into Copilot. So I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to call it point.js. And we will install Copilot. So installing Copilot is really easy. I just go to extensions in and I'm going to type in Copilot. All right now there's a couple of them, but you want GitHub Copilot, so I'm going to install that one. And then I'm also going to install Copilot Labs, which we'll see towards the end of the demo. So I'll install that as well. All right, so I have my extensions installed. You'll see the little Copilot icon here, and I can deactivate it there. The first time you install it, you may have to accept some terms. Uh, but as long as you can see the little Copilot here, uh, Copilot is active. All right, so I'm going to just put in a comment here, create a class to represent a two-dimensional point and uh, you can actually see Copilot helping me finish the comment but from that comment let's starting to give Copilot some context for what I want to do so function point x y looks pretty good um, this x is equal to x this y equals y that looks pretty good and now without even typing Copilot is already suggesting creating a class for a two-dimensional vector now that's not something I really want to do so I'm going to ignore that suggestion and I'm going to carry on. So let's type here, create or calculate. And it's completing my thought there. Calculate the distance between two points. So I'll do that. And it's using the prototype to create a new method on the point class. And uh, if I think back to high school math, that looks correct. Yep, square root of the distance, the difference between the x's and the difference between the y's. All right, so now what about uh, calculate the shortest point or the closest point? Closest point uh, in a list of points. All right, and we have function closest, which makes sense. And let's see. And uh, all right, closest equals null, closest distance number max value if the distance is shorter then return the closest okay that looks pretty good but let's see what else we can come up with so i'm just going to mouse over and open up the github copilot and that's going to show me a number of solutions so this first one is the one that popped up but there are other ones here uh closest this distance that's using distance points i actually like that better it looks a little bit simpler so let's accept this solution all right so we've popped that in and let's see what else we can do here uh, it's suggesting we export the point class which probably makes sense so will module exports equals point so uh, that looks pretty good I'm I'm fairly happy with what copilot suggested there and the whole time I've been working here, I haven't actually left my development environment. I haven't left my code space at all. So that's that's kind of cool. I'm a little bit mathematical, maybe a little bit theoretical. What about real application? So let's switch over to my actual application that has a real uh, database and some unit tests and let's see what Copilot does for that. So I'm going to open up app.js Let's close point. We're not going to need that. Uh, now this is a bike reservation API and I want to reserve bikes and uh, there is a whole lot of methods for doing that in here. Um, so if I look down at the bottom there's get available bikes, get all bikes, get bike by ID, put a bike by ID and so on. What I don't see here is the ability to get the bikes that a user has reserved. So let's get Copilot to help me with that. So let's, uh, add, well, let's go handle, um, get bikes that a user has reserved. All right. So it is going to generate function handle get 
reserved bikes. Now, why did I put handle in there? That's because it's looking at the context of the file and it can see that all of the functions that I have for this API have this format or the syntax where they have handle and some type of thing to handle. So that's the root that it's handling from the from the API request. So uh, it's generating that name from the context of the file. So that looks right. And it is going to generate a request ID. Uh, or it's going to check the request ID. Now again, you can see there are other methods that are doing this uh, where it is validating that the request ID is part of the header there. And so that's for logging and so on. Uh, but again, it's looking at the context of what the other methods in this file are doing to generate the code or to help it generate code that more closely resembles the code that I have in this file. And the more code you have, uh, the more detailed that context is. So that looks right. We're going to validate the user ID parameter. We're going to send uh, a 400 status if we don't get an ID. So that makes sense. All right, now it's doing the get db find, but it's not actually, and it's doing a two array. All right, so that looks good. If there's an error, then we're going to return that error. Um, otherwise, what I actually want to do is I want to loop over the results. So results and for each function bike. All right, and delete bike ID. So again, that's code that it's getting from other methods within this class. And res.send result is to send that final result. All right, that actually looks pretty decent. So again, pretty quick to generate a method. Uh, there's one or two things I'm gonna need to fix up here, but that looks pretty good. All right, so we'll come back to this. What I wanna do now, well, let's first actually add the handler to this. So, and uh, immediately Copilot knows that I need to add the route and call the method. All right, so I think we have everything we need there, more or less. Uh, let's go over to the test folder. And I do have an app test here where we have some tests so let's get copilot to help generate a test all right so uh, test bikes reserved method bikes reserved by user method let's see if copilot can figure that out all right kind of let's see what it does all right agent dot get bikes by user all right that actually looks Pretty good. Um, missing a close round paren. All right, so the API, this route is not exactly correct. So let's go back to app.js and we'll just grab this one and it's gonna be slash the ID. So we'll go back to here and we'll just paste this in here. All right, so call API reserved bikes one, which would be the user ID. And we're gonna just check that there's only one. Uh, we can fix up this, the name as well. All right, so that actually looks pretty good. I will have to add some test data for that. So the test data is actually being populated by this populate test data method here. And this is just inserting some test data. So we're going, we have some bikes here, which is fine. We're going to need some uh, customers as well. So let's create a uh, customers. All right, let's see, we've got ID one, name customer one, email user one at home.com. All right, password. I don't know, I think we've got passwords here, but that's fine, credit card. Uh, we're not going to do any reservations. All right, but that, that was a pretty decent attempt. All right, um, let us make sure that all of this is right. I know we don't have passwords, so I should maybe, let's look here. Anyway, uh, we have a populate database project in here, and that has got some data.json. So this is actually a C-sharp project, but this is inserting some test data into our test environment. 
So we can borrow some of this here. All right, so it looks like we've got phone and email. We've got CC number, CC expiry. Uh, so let's just grab these fields here. Uh, in fact, we can just grab this whole thing. But you can see that Copilot did a pretty decent job of generating that data. Let's go back to populate test data. Uh, right, copying that's not going to work exactly. But we had an email, we had an address, which is fine. We had, I think it was called credit card. Let's go and have a look here. So it was called CC number. All right, so that's what I want to copy. CC number, and then we had CC expiry. Uh, expiration, no, I want expiry. And let's put a date in there and CCCVB. All right, so that's how we generate one user class. Now, because Copilot has some context, it should actually learn that this is the format for our customers. So customer two, email, cust two at work.com. Uh, all right, and you can see it does address, and now it knows that it's doing CC number, expiry, and CVV. All right, so that looks good. We'll finish that off. <clears throat> and so now we have an array of customers. I think what I want to do is this spike here, we're going to actually assign this to the user. So reserved by. Uh, okay, so it's automatically going to this reservation concept. But again, if we check back in data, uh, actually, maybe it's not going to be in data. I think it's actually going to be in the schema here. So in the schema here, it's actually owner user ID not reserved by. So let me go back down here to this method that generated was generated by copilot and we'll just replace this property we want to find where owner user id is equal to the user id that we're querying from so we'll just update that and let's go back to populate test data and again we'll update that to owner user id and that should be it all right so then we need to add that insertion in here. So we, I think we'll need to insert the uh, customers first. So let's put the collection to customers first. Insert many customers. And then if error, throw error, that's fine. And then we will do the insert of the bikes and then we'll do the callback all right and I think that's going to insert the data for us so uh, we've used copilot to help us generate some static test data um, help us figure out how to insert that um, help us generate this method for user one we should have just one bike so we should only get one uh, one item back so that looks correct. So let's run the test. So npm run test. And let's see how well we did. All right, well, the test passed. So that looks pretty decent. All right. So Copilot helped us generate a new method and a test and some test data and everything's working first run so not too bad all right let's see what else copilot could do there's one more thing i wanted to show you on the copilot lab so let's go back to app.js and i want to look at this process reservation method all right so uh, i'm going to click here in this little copilot icon here so that you can see this says copilot labs it says highlight a block of code that you would like to explore so I'm going to highlight this function here and I'm going to get a bit more space here in the top I'm going to ask copilot to explain this code for me ask copilot 
And Copilot's gonna look at that code and actually explain what this code is doing. All right, so let's look at this. So uh, we first check if the bike object is valid. If not, we return 400 status code. We call update one function. If the update is successful, we return a 200, otherwise a 400 with the message invalid. All right, so that doesn't look too bad. Let's see if we can do another one here. Uh, let's see if we can get it to explain delete bike. All right, we'll ask Copilot. All right, well, that's interesting. We've got a whole lot more here. All right, so we take two parameters, rec and res. The rec parameter is the request object and the res parameter is the response object. These are automatically passed to the function when executed by Node.js. All right, so again, I'm not gonna read through all of this, but you can see this gives us a pretty detailed explanation of what this code is doing. Uh, so that can help you if you're looking at some code and you're trying to figure out what code is doing. You can help, you can get Copilot to help you do that. Uh, the other thing a Copilot Labs can do is do a translation. So let's see what this code would look like in Python. So I'll ask Copilot, and our Copilot has translated that code into Python. I don't know if this is going to work exactly. I don't know what uh, what the database <coughs> access looks like for Mongo from Python, but uh, the syntax looks correct and uh, it's very looks very pythonic so uh, that looks like it's pretty decent all right well hopefully you enjoyed that quick demo of copilot and happy coding